Jason Tatum breaks Larry Bird's record, and the Celtics show some impressive energy. They look pretty good out there their second game in a row. Is this a turnaround, or are we being duped? It's all right now on a bonus Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Green and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast drop directly to your device if you're a subscriber. So go ahead and subscribe. It's on every app that podcasts exist. It's also on YouTube. Watch the show on YouTube. Hop into the comment section. Have some fun there. I'm John Corrales, former professional basketball player. Now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. And I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. If you want a signed copy, it's on johncorrales.com. If you want a regular old copy, you can go to Amazon. It's there. Boston Celtics get a 120-95 to win over the Indiana Pacers. So here's your bonus podcast, about 20 minutes of talking about this game. I was worried about the first game back from the long road trip. It's typically a struggle for home teams. And you know what? Celtics actually played well. I am I am impressed. They came with the right energy. They came with with the right pace. They played with the right pace. They played well. It's the second game in a row that they've played well. This is just the game that impressed me. Uh the energy, the 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 way they played, the style, everything is exactly what you want out of uh, out of the Celtics. It's kind of raises a question here is this are we being duped here are we is this the the end of the their their rut is or is this is are we uh you know on sunday gonna be in for a a rude awakening and i honestly i think sunday is the answer to the question uh so you know there's an old saying about once is luck Second time is coincidence. The third time is a trend. So not exactly apples to apples comparison here, but first time you're like, okay, that's good. Second time. All right. I, you know, the teams can have two good games in a row. The reason why Sunday is such a, uh, an indicator of whether the Celtics truly are back. It's because the Spurs are a bad team. It's it's specifically because the Spurs are a bad team. And that's not a game that the Celtics have normally gotten up for. So, okay, the Kings, that's a, they're a good team this year. The Pacers have had the Celtics kind of number a, a little bit, and the Celtics had something to prove. Okay. The Spurs are, are terrible. Spurs are a bad team. Uh, the, the Celtics should roll, should win that thing easily. But if the Celtics come in and, and just think that, then we'll see a lot of the same mistakes. If the Celtics come in and play with the same pace and style that they've played against the Kings and the Pacers, and they roll right through the San Antonio Spurs, Then I'll believe, then I'll believe, because that means the Celtics are getting up for the bad teams. If you're getting up for the bad teams and you're rolling those bad teams, and that's exactly what all of us have been asking for. It's exactly what every one of us has been saying from the beginning. We want to see, we want to see this team at its best all the time. Send a message, send a message for once. So the Celtics... It wasn't a perfect game. It really wasn't a perfect game. They came out, they shot well, but they were generating good shots. They were giving up some, the defense wasn't exactly where it ended up to start the game. 
they they had a stretch where TJ McConnell was killing them, which is, you know, TJ McConnell, man. What what he what's he doing to kill you? And he dominated the second quarter. He, that's not something that is is really uh, you, you can't you can't go around being a, a good basketball team having TJ McConnell torch you. And then they they shut that off eventually, but. That was that was not good. But then in the third quarter, which has been a problem for them this year, they came out and just smoked the Pacers. And I thought they played great defense. A couple of things. I would say three things stood out to me in this game. The defense, where they had, uh, where they finished with, 11 steals in this game. They had 21 points off of turnovers in this game. Uh, they, when you talk about winning on the margins, they, they only allowed six offensive rebounds. And a lot of those came late Celtics only had, well, they had 14 turnovers, which isn't, isn't great, but those didn't turn into points necessarily. The Celtics handily won the points off of turnovers battle. They ended up getting up nine more shots. than the Pacers, they ended up getting to the free throw line and making ultimately the it was one more, but I think that that kind of changed in the fourth quarter. The Celtics did a good job through parts of the game that mattered. So they they won on the margins. Their defense was was really good. They had a stretch at the beginning of the third quarter. They had four steals in about four minutes. Uh two of them came in the in the turning point play for me, which was smart. Uh, rips, I forget who it was, um, Halliburton, maybe. It goes over to Al Horford, who kicks it up to Jalen Brown, who just immediately turns very well aware, good court awareness, flips it over to Jason Tatum, who lays it in. And as Tatum is running back, Aaron Neesmith throws a terrible inbounds pass. Tatum picks it off, gets it over to Jalen. Jalen takes, honestly, not the best three in the world, but it went in. So, uh, hey, five points in eight seconds is, is you know, impressive no, no matter how you slice it. That, that right there told me a lot about where this second half was going. And the Celtics, it, you know, people forget that uh, Halliburton, I think it was, came out and hit a, hit a shot right away. So the five-point halftime lead was down to three. And then all of a sudden, it was a 14-point game, like in a blink. So that stretch, the defense, super impressive. The other thing, I said three, so there's now we're on number two. Number two is Marcus Smart, actually point guarding. How many times have we talked about throughout the course of this? When you have Marcus Smart waiting to catch and shoot, bad, because he takes a bunch of shots and he's not doing what he's supposed to do. In this one, 27 minutes, Smart, five assists, Three shots, one missed three. That's it. Six points, but he was a plus 17. Third best on the team. Joe Mazzulla said it after the game, unprompted. When asked about Derek White, he said, it starts with Marcus Smart pushing the tempo, pushing the pace. And, and it's 100% true. When you see Marcus out there pushing, getting the guys to follow him, Get that tempo up. Get that pace up. Celtics offense looks good, and when their offense looks good, they can't wait to come back and play defense so you can get that ball back. So Smart just pushing the pace was impressive. Marcus Smart, the point guard, five assists, three steals, man. That That's, that's that dude. That's the guy that I keep gushing about. Marcus in this role is great in this role. And then the other thing is Jason Tatum, who 34 points on 13 of 24 shooting, three of nine. So that means 15 shots from two. Now, not only was it 15 shots from two, it was getting to the rim, getting to the restricted area. He was 10 of, let me see, what's the number? 10 of 13 in the restricted area. In this game, he was 10 of 14 in the restricted area against the Kings, which means 20 of 27 
in the restricted area, 74% over the past two games. Not only is 74% finishing at the restricted area, Joel Embiid and Giannis and Tentacumpo level numbers. It's also double, basically double what he normally gets. He gets 6.2 shots uh, in the restricted area per game. So a little more than double in the last two games, the shots at the rim. And unsurprisingly, it's because the ball is moving and there are gaps, weaknesses in the defense to attack. How many times have I said it on this podcast? If you're a regular listener, you've heard me say it a million times. Don't attack mismatches. Attack weaknesses in the defense. When you move the ball, gaps open, cracks open in the defense. Attack those Don't just attack specific matchups. Sure, yeah, you want to pick on a smaller guy. TJ McConnell switches on to Jalen Brown. Of course, Jalen Brown shoots over the top of him, of course. But you can't just build an entire offense on, oh, where's TJ McConnell? Oh, he's over there? Okay, everybody else just chill out. TJ's guy is going to come up and set a screen so I can switch on to him and I can cook. That's not offense. I mean, it's fine. You know, playoffs, you're going to have to do that when things get mucked up and and slow down and you can't get out into transition. I get it. That's, that's definitely part of it. But the Celtics moved the ball, attacked. They didn't hold it. The ball just, it didn't get stagnant. The offense didn't get stagnant. And when Jason Tatum gets the ball on the move, unstoppable. Unstoppable. So, yeah, of course he had in another, you know, mid 30 point scoring game, 34 points on 54% shooting because he can't miss at the rim. And when he does, he gets fouled. He took another six free throws, five of six from the line. That's, this is the Tatum. This is the Tatum that gets the MVP chance. This is the guy who gets the, you know, and, and earns the MVP chance and the MVP votes. Uh, I just thought overall that the Celtics came in with the spectacular energy. They had the right mentality. They let their defense kind of flow into their offense. And it was just a fantastic, fantastically played game. We talk about process over results. All the time. Brad Stevens, Kaizen, all of that. The process over the past two games has been good, and that's why the results have been good. As I said, Sunday against a bad Spurs team, especially, you know, heading out on the road, they've got games against Washington. You know, Tatum is going to be very excited to go see his friend Bradley Beal, and they're all going to be very excited to play the Milwaukee Bucks next week. Spurs, it, that's a game you're going to look past. It's a terrible team. You've just played two awesome games. Everybody feels like everything is fixed, and it might be, but you got to go prove it. Jason Tatum, by the way, he's fourth, 40th, 40th, 30-point-plus scoring game. That breaks Larry Bird's record of 39 set in the 1988 season. So another Larry Bird thing that he did gets knocked to the wayside by Jason Tatum. It's impressive, man. It's impressive that he can, he can continue to move up these, these charts. I've been critical of Tatum recently because I don't think he's been playing well. I don't think he's been playing the right way. This Tatum, this guy, I'm, I'm impressed with this guy. This is the guy that can help lead the Celtics to a championship along with Jalen Brown who was really good. And in that third quarter, it was Jalen who in the third quarter helped break the game open. Thought Jalen had some really, just really nice plays, really uh, seeing the floor well, making the right decisions. Uh, 27.7 rebounds, four assists. Like I said, that third quarter stretch where he was cooking, but even when he was cooking, he was looking for his teammates. I thought, He was very, very, uh, he played very, very well in that third quarter. And this is it. I mean, you got 34 points 
for Jason, 27 points for Jalen. So another 60 plus point combination that Celtics just don't lose those games. Those guys are scoring combining for 60 points. Celtics aren't going to lose. They're not going to lose a series. If those guys are combining to score 60 points in that series, that's, that's just too much firepower, too much of varied kind of offense, too many different things that they can do. If they're, if they're attacking the defense, those weaknesses, Jalen and Jason, this combination, this, the way they played here, beautiful. The only thing I can say about Jalen is he forgot how to throw an alley-oop because he damn near killed Robert Williams. Robert Williams, by the way, another, another huge element of this game, 15 minutes, but eight rebounds, three, re- I mean, three steals, three block shots, instant impact for him. I feel like they're going to, th- this is just going to be how it goes. This lineup that we saw, this rotation that we saw, for the most part, is going to be how it goes. The so top to bottom, I don't think anybody had a bad game. I thought top to bottom, everybody who played made a contribution. Jalen and Jason, obviously. Horford, who just kind of, you know, nice game, six points, hit a couple of three-pointers, but nine rebounds, four assists, a steal, a block, two turnovers. He just was kind of good, steady, really, really good. Rob comes in. Uh Catches an alley-oop, a gorgeous alley-oop from, from uh, Derek White, I believe. Uh, but, the, but the rebounds, the two offensive rebounds, the, the steals, the blocks, I mean, he was, he, was making, he was making such a difference. And he makes the entire defense better because you know that you, you can kind of – it doesn't matter if you get beat because Rob's going to be back there. So you can be that little bit more aggressive. Not surprising that the Celtics – the past two games have had very, very active hands. Very, very active in passing lanes. They have forced live ball turnovers, and it's not surprising that Rob being back kind of coincides with that because he does kind of give you that ability. Hey, you know what? I am going to go for this because if I go for this steal and I miss, that guy's going to turn the corner, stare Robert Williams in the face and go, nah, I'm just going to pull this back out. So there's not as much risk. So it does. It didn't feel like the Celtics were getting burned quite as much by Indiana's guards. But with Rob back there, especially when a guard turns a corner and sees Robert Williams and just kicks it out and starts to run more offense, then he's done his job there. And it makes everyone else feel better. So... Rob was huge in this game. Derek White, huge in this game. <laughs> I really do feel like uh, Joe Missoula, I don't know if he did this on purpose or what, but Celtics had this thing up to 20 with nine and a half minutes or so to go in the in the fourth quarter. And Derek White stayed in until about three minutes left. I thought he was going to play Derek White the entire fourth quarter because we just kept saying, We need more Derek White in the fourth quarter. I was waiting, waiting for him to play him the whole fourth quarter and have have us ask him after the game, hey, why did you play him the whole fourth quarter? Don't you guys want me to do that? I could totally see that coming. He ultimately subbed him out and it didn't become a storyline. But yeah, that was was kind of funny. 22 points, nine assists, team high nine assists uh, for for Derek White, who's just another another great game. And, And I remember saying that Derek White is the bellwether of this Celtics offense. If he's hitting three-pointers, then it's because the Celtics offense is clicking, moving, generating good shots. Five of nine from three. I still think that applies. When the Celtics offense is moving like this, Derek White, especially if he's starting, Derek White getting multiple three-pointers to fall is not a surprise. Five of nine shooting is not that big of a surprise considering that he just, he gets a lot of very open, very clean catch and shoot opportunities. So that's, that's another great kind of indicator. So is Sam Hauser, by the way, three of four shooting for him for nine points. Uh, And he grabbed five rebounds. It's a nice night for him. 
Grant Williams comes in, shoots five of 10, two of six from three, 12 points, six rebounds, four offensive rebounds for him. You know what I love about what Grant Williams is doing right now? A couple things. He's making the right play. And if you listen to some of the, the Grant Williams podcasts that I did, talked about how he's going to a lot of step backs and going to a lot of floaters and doing a lot of that stuff the Celtics don't need him to do. He hasn't been doing a lot of that since he's gotten back to playing. He had one play in particular in the first half where he fake handoff in the corner. He made the right read. He got himself into the paint. The rim got closed off. He didn't force it. He didn't try a floater. He just moved the ball. And the ball swung around, and it got, I think it was Tatum who drove and got the foul. But that was all from Grant Williams because Grant didn't try to do too much. Grant did exactly what he was supposed to do, and it paid off. He's not celebrating his three-pointers. I think he maybe celebrated one at the end. He's not arguing with the refs. I saw him like throw his arms up once, and then he put his arms down and ran back. I really honestly feel like either he came to a conclusion, someone close to him came to a conclusion, or someone from the team came to a conclusion. Grant, shut up. And he's shutting up. He's not going crazy like he had been with the refs. He's not getting preoccupied with that. He's doing his job, which is however he came to that conclusion, good. I'm glad. Because this Grant Williams, just like I said with this Jason Tatum, this Grant Williams, this is the guy that's going to help the Celtics make a difference. In the, he, he's going to make a difference in a series. Playing like this, Grant Williams will swing a game in a series. When it comes to the playoffs, if you can have one game where someone other than your stars swings it, you're going to win that series. Celtics have Grant, who can do that, Derek White, who can do that, Robert Williams, who can do that, Al Horford, but even, even I wouldn't even throw Al Horford into that. Grant played, played great. I thought he played great. Celtics played great. I'm very impressed with how the Celtics played. So this is a, this is a nice, a nice, solid, impressive win. Nothing more to say about that. Let's see what they do on Sunday. If they do this again on Sunday and play the same way on Sunday and blow the doors off the Spurs. Now we got something. Now you can say, hey, the Celtics are back. They look back. It seems like they're back. Let's, I want one more. I want to see them prove it on Sunday that they can get up for a team like the Spurs before they head out on a road trip where Tatum gets to hang out with his one of his best friends and then they go to Milwaukee for a chance potentially at getting back to that top seed. Maybe. That's going to be tough. Eight games left. The Celtics will need to go. They'll need to be three games better than the, the Bucks, uh, I don't know if they, there's enough time. But, hey, with that one game next week, that's one that, that could swing. That could swing a lot. So, we'll see. I'll be back after the Spurs game with a full podcast. This is just a bonus kind of like, I mean, <laughs> did I go 15 minutes? No, I think I went 20 minutes. So, this is technically a shorter podcast, but not by much. But it's a bonus pod, so hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe if you are new to the podcast. And if you are a regular subscriber, if you watch the show on YouTube, all of that, then share it. Tell your friends. Spread the word. Really would be helpful. This show's free. If you want to pay me somehow, this is a great way to pay me. By spreading the word, telling everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>